What I am Nietzsche, he's Nietzsche, she is Nietzsche too. I am Nietzsche, we are Nietzsche, but I believe that you are Nietzsche too. All right. So I'm uh, here. I'm supposed to have an interview with the ninja from AskAninja.com, but I don't think he's here. Yeah, he's not here yet. Did he know what time we were supposed to meet? Or uh, I mean, is this know, the right place? Yeah, this is the right place. You know, he just shows up. We leave the whole setup going 24/7, and we go through a lot of tape stock, and we just hope that he shows up. Okay. I guess I could wait a little while, or I could leave and come did back. You, and... Did you rub yourself with a scent of human fear? <laughs> no, I I haven't done that yet. Maybe I should, but I think I'm gonna go and maybe I'll come back in a little while. I, that sound okay? That's your head, literally. Hey, yeah. Hey, where's the Duke guy? He said he was gonna be here. I'm right here. Oh, there you are. That's pretty sneaky right there, buddy. Sorry I'm late, but I am caught up in this holiday season. It's exciting. So are ninjas really into the holidays? We love them. How about Jack Frost? That guy has nipped over four million noses. Nobody's ever seen him. Baby New Year and Father Time, they're a ninja team. Every year they have to battle the demon Old Man Winter just to keep him from freezing existence as we know it. That is no easy task. Santa, of course, huge ninja. Come on, both literally and metaphorically. Is there anybody else? Of course you've got Santa's elite guard, the Pain Deer. Pain Deer. That's right. You know Slasher and Lancer and Stabber and Stixum. Comma and Cuts It and Deather and Kicks Em. But do you recall the most unknown Pain Deer of all? I'm gonna do a ninja holiday story, huh? I bet you didn't see that coming. Um, isn't that why you called me over here? Don't get smart with me. Red Death, the on-fire pain deer, had a knack for burning things. And if you ever saw him, that probably meant you were about to be burned badly. Okay, so way up somewhere in the Black Pole, they were preparing for the holidays and everybody was really busy. Then it was three days before anyone noticed that Mrs. Claus had been brutally slaughtered. No, oh, Fiddlebottoms! Frosty, that incorrigible zombie snowman has killed Mama Claus and eaten her brain! Santa was really upset about it, but he didn't have any time to do anything about it because he was too busy making his list of what deadly stuff he was going to give to the boys and girls of the world. Don't worry about it, Santa. Lancer and I will avenge your death, and we'll make that frozen living dead bastard Frosty into a dead, dead bastard. Just then, there was a knock at the door. Guess who it was? Um, Jennifer Love Hewitt? No, that's completely wrong, because there wasn't even a knock at the door. The door just burst into flames, because it was Red Death, the on-fire pain deer. Huh? How about that? Who actually was a pretty unpopular pain deer, because he was always on fire. Mrs. Claus was pretty much the only one who liked him, and I think she was faking it. Oh, bitter fodder. Red Death, you caught my house on fire. Yeah, you flaming idiot, and you melted the tracks left by Frost Teeth. Now we can't track him. Well, we can at least try. Try war, looking for a man made of snow in a land entirely covered with snow? That's like looking for a bad spoonful of soup in a pot of soup. So Red Death hung his on fire head in shame and left the Black Pole, but he had barely gotten past the forest of Whitaker when suddenly he found himself surrounded by psych goat paths. These are some oversized, insane goats. So he's surrounded by all these psycho paths when suddenly, out of nowhere, this little enchanted piece of metal flies up and cuts all of the goat's tongues out. And the psych goat path went running away. Hey, thanks, piece of metal. You saved my life. I'm not just a piece of metal. The just a piece of metal exclaimed. My name is Finny and I'm a shirkin. But you don't have any pointy parts like a shirkin supposed to I'm just a little misshapen hey you know what I just realized I'm on fire so this ice flow is probably pretty much the worst mode of transportation possible yay I'm gonna take you home and this is the part where Red Death and Spinny become best friends and they sing a song listen to this death to the world of bad bad things and food makes a thin man wet you'll never find your Happiness without a little slice and flat, a little slice and flat. We'll cut and cut and punch some cats. So Spinny the poor 
pointless jerk and brought Red Death back to his cave. And Red Death was like, I don't know if I should go in here. But he went in there really slowly and his glowing body was causing reflections on the wall and they're really scary shapes and looking really weird. And just when he was trying to figure out what they were, he had to wait for the next episode. This episode is brought to you by Verizon. They got the Fios, the speed and the power and everything on the nation's most advanced all digital fiber optic network. I'm saying this, Verizon Fios, best picture, hands down. Second best picture is this. Can I point out something real quick? Um, your narrator voice, yeah. your death voice sound exactly the same. No, they don't. Yeah, they, they do. That would be impossible. I'm not doing all of the voices for this. They got a cast of thousand. Okay. That was Charlton Heston is actually doing the voice of Red Death. I don't see Charlton Heston here. That's how good he is. Tired of paying retail? Then just do it one more time and buy the Ninja Handbook. Then you can take a break for a while while you read it. Ask at NinjaBook.com!